Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to do a review of the Orcas Island Five Day 2023 Staff Retreat. The staff retreat went extraordinarily well. Most people showed up very well prepared. It is staff, club, and mace taught in a rotating sequence. The point of the seminar is to help athletes see what the most important human movements are and to have them learn them experimentally so that they can never forget them. Staff, mace, and club are the oldest ways to train on the planet for humans, for sure. Humans have thumbs for a reason. It allows you to hold onto levers. The oldest sport in history is trying to stay alive. So using something like a staff, which is a lever, allows smaller framed people to athletically compete with larger framed people in the context of defense. There are a couple of things that we always talk about in the seminar. The most important thing that you learn is to not get hit. This is ironically not something that is taught very much in martial arts. Most sport-based martial arts work on weight classes where you're fighting one person of equal size on level ground. The whole idea of the staff seminar is to take it out of that context. So we have people of unequal size doing fight drills, people who are 100 pounds versus people who are my size, 240 pounds. At that point, the most important thing to learn is to not get hit. How do you accomplish that task? You accomplish that task by putting something between you and the thing that's trying to hit you. In the case of this, it's a staff. And then we build out from there. Movements that you're gonna see all the time in historical or self-defense contexts are shield cast and two-hand overhead press, two-hand overhead press from the warrior one position, hips closed, hips pacing forward, one leg forward, one leg back. And then when you start to deal with multiple attackers, you start transitioning from warrior one through warrior two or open hip warrior position back into warrior position facing the other way. The whole seminar is getting people to do these things thousands and thousands of times. And we do this by setting up a series of experiments. The series of experiments are people deciding to not get hit in the face and then eventually deciding to hit back and then doing it so many times that we don't have to tell people what the right way to do something is. The right way to do it is the way that works. The more you do it, the more people learn to line up optimally. It is by gathering data. And I do this with a bunch of math because I am a nerd. So at the low end, people tend to make about 30 decisions per minute in the staff section. At the high end, they're making over 60 decisions per minute. Inside of an hour or inside of 10 rounds of training, people could be making 600 decisions. Most people slowed down as they get tired. So when they start on day one, it's maybe 30 decisions per minute. And then it ramps up in day three to 60 decisions per minute. And then by day five, it ramps back down to about 30 decisions per minute. The whole idea of this is mathematically, we want people to make a minimum of 10,000 decisions. At the higher end, higher average end, they're making at least 20,000. Why does this matter? This matters because most people have never decided to contribute to their own safety in their entire life. In the modern world, people tend to be discouraged from participating in their own safety. And I like to call this the don't hit Timmy reflex that was beaten into you somewhere in kindergarten, where Timmy, the mean kid in class, we're just naming him Timmy generically because I think it's funny, would hit you and steal your crayon. And you'd hit Timmy back and you got in trouble just as much as Timmy did. He initiated the violence and you got in trouble for defending yourself. So most people are told their whole life, don't hit Timmy back, go find a teacher. The problem with that is that never goes away for most people. They get to be 18 and they get out of school and they never stop looking for a teacher to defend them from people who are doing something bad to them. You see this a lot in statistics, people oftentimes in the modern world choose not to participate in the defense of themselves or their own life. Usually they will only defend if somebody else's life is involved. This is uh, the mother reflex. And they learn this from doing like interviews with serial killers. You can look this up. Uh, 
most p women, when confronted with a serial killer, would just comply. They would be taken and then they would be killed or whatever. The people who did not comply with their attackers were always the ones who lived. You can look up all these uh, psychology of violence interviews with really bad people in prison. It's fascinating. But the point of this seminar is to make sure that people are capable of contributing to their own personal defense so that they can be useful athletically to others. The original sport in all of human history is staying alive, and we've just gotten really, really bad at it. The seminar is always structured the same way. We usually start with staff right away because we want to see what people do. Every person who comes to the staff seminar works with each individual coach for at least five minutes. That way, every coach has seen everybody move. They know what everybody's going to do and we see how quickly or slowly they make decisions so that we can figure out how to tailor individual drills for everybody to optimize everybody's learning experience because we are nerds. After that we move to steel mace vinyasa yoga, after that we go to clubs and then we cycle through those ideas over and over and over again. We always move back and forth between staff, mace, and club because it cycles how the athlete moves in these five-day seminars. Five-day seminars are a lot of information in an extremely short period of time. You have all the decisions you have to make to learn to contribute to not getting hit, and then we reinforce those exact same movement patterns and ideas with the heavy club swinging and with the steel mace. The steel mace portion almost always focuses very heavily on warrior one, warrior two, overhead press to drop swing, which is really a shield cast because that is nearly the exact same movement pattern that you are doing when you are doing staff. Then we do the heavy club part because the heavy club part tells people whether or not they are actually lining up their wrist and their elbow correctly because everybody thinks that they're doing it right until they show up to a seminar and usually in the first two days people find out what they do not know. People realize they do not know a lot of very important things. We try to move these seminar locations around the world because each environment provides different training opportunities. On Orcas Island, we got to do training in the Pacific Northwest Forest, which is quite possibly the most beautiful forest I've ever seen, especially out on the islands. It's really like an old forest. You don't have a lot of old forests anywhere on the East Coast. It's very rare to find them in Europe. I think that you have some in Romania, which I've been in, which are awesome and beautiful. And I think that there are there might still be some in Germany, but for the most part, old forests are forests with giant trees that are extremely old and they don't have a lot of undergrowth underneath them. All of America used to look like that and only a couple of spots still do. All this forest that you see behind me here in the Midwest is extremely young forest. It's really maybe 40 or 50 years old. Occasionally you'll see one tree that's 100 years old. But for the most part, these are filled. They're very much like brush land. They're hard to run through, hard to move through. The Pacific Northwest has a beautiful old forest where you can see for hundreds of yards underneath the tree canopy. We have another five day seminar coming up in Thailand in January. That one's really fun because we're gonna get to train actually at temple grounds, visit a bunch of different temples, and train in a bunch of places where a lot of these ideas have been invented over and over and over again. When you go into the temple in Thailand, the first thing you see on the wall is clubs, maces, staffs, and machetes. All the stuff that I talk about all the time. There are basic things that pop up all throughout history. They are tied to the most important movement patterns that humans do, and everybody should know them. It will make you a better athlete forever.